There be people. All right, there you are. Hello. There you be. People. Oops. Oh. Oops. <laughs> I'm get, I've, I've got to get rid of that extra sound. There we is. There we is. Hello. Um. That's fun. today we are, of course, curology. Yes. But, you know, I still don't know how these. You know, we do this every week, and I still don't know how these windows work. It's uh, which window? Well, I don't want this one. I wish I can go get away from oh. that one. Anyway, hello everyone. We're we're just uh, you know, we're live. I think we're live. It appears to be so. And um, I'm going to turn this phone off. I don't know if that ever helps, but well, I don't know. All I know. The little hearts are popping a little slow. Yeah, everything's going on. Uh, I want to stop this video if I can. Uh, what did it do? It says it's playing. Okay. Well. Now playing, but we don't see anybody. Yeah, you just, eat. I see people. Oh, there we go. Well, this is Curology Live, and we do this every Tuesday. And this is... A from the instruction of the Lord as a response to a high and lofty thing that came into our world a few years ago, the little C, some of our team calls it. Oh, the teeny weeny C. <laughs> and uh, we want to make sure that we respond properly all the time. You know, things are coming at us all the time. Yeah. And we have to respond properly. You you have to respond properly to everything. Otherwise, you're going to get uh, swamped. You're going to get overtaken. Your will is going to be overrun. Um, you know, it, that's fine if you don't have an enemy, right? If we don't have enemies. And of course, people are not our enemies. But, but the thing behind people <laughs> often is, and we have an enemy and we need to always respond. Jesus never ignored the devil. No, he talked I've that. heard so many preachers say, oh, just ignore the devil. He, you know, it's not worthy of our attention. But that's not ever what Jesus did. He responded to everything the devil said and did. <laughs> and, and not with questions, not with, uh, you know, back and forth what is that bantering oh no bantering um but he would answer satan in order to bring him back to his place you know when you put somebody in, in their place that is usually a correction yeah sit down second like that not quite like that more like jesus does where he responds with the word of god <laughs> I thought mine was a good response. <laughs> Yours is funnier, but yes. it's not as effective. <laughs> and so uh, we we see that you know Eve Eve stepped out of something that was her place. Her place she stepped out of, and that attracts the enemy. You know, it's important that we stay in our place. And I'm not only talking about. Humility, but it starts with humility, accepting your place that God has assigned to you. That is a powerful place yeah. because you're safe there. Um, you know, Adam and Eve ha you ha were created by God, but with very specific roles. And so, of course, our our Jewish friends, you know, they, they read the jot and the tittles, which us Westerners often don't know um and and they know numerology they know what did rabbi lapin say there's like 70 or 80 ways of that was someone else oh that was someone else yeah. confirming the yeah. hebrew or however it works but there's lots of dimensions to the hebrew language that you do not have in any other language because god created that language yes. and so you know hebrew is the kind of language that if you turn it around you know, the letters, you switch the letters around in Hebrew, it actually be becomes the opposite, right? Left and right are the same word, but opposite. <laughs> Light yes. and dark are the same word, but switched around. Yeah. Well, you cannot do that in, in English, right? You can't right. turn God and turn it around and then, you know, or light. and <laughs> You can't do any of these things. And so it's, 
everything in English is very simple. It's either literal or figurative, pretty much, right? And so in Hebrew, there's so many more dimensions. And so when we are learning about the first humans, which are not cavemen, but actually Adam and Eve, who God created spectacularly, they were perfect. They were uh, created in the image and likeness of God himself, um, but with a very specific role. Not Eve was not less than Adam, right. and Adam wasn't more than Eve, but they had specific roles. Adam still is, you know, considered, the husband is considered the provider, and the, the wife is still the life giver of the family, right? Uh, so the husband is still the giver and the wife should still be the receiver. Yeah. And with the receiving, she makes more of what she has received. She multiplies That's what good. she gets. So there's there's all that. And you see that Eve is not following necessarily the way things should go. Here, Satan sees her looking at this tree that is forbidden, hmm. that God said, don't do that, right? And there, and you know, many people say, well, why would God do that? Why would he, you know, tempt, tempt us? But uh, there has to be a free will in order for us to have a real relationship with God and to be like God. God is a free moral agent. And in making Adam and Eve, he also made us free moral agents. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sharing that a lot with this generation because they, often will argue like, well, if God has darkness and light in the world, then maybe it's his will that we choose darkness, but that's not true. <laughs> but God gave us a free will because he is love and right. love can only be real when, when there's a free will. Right. On top of that, in creating us like himself, he has an enemy. We have to have enemies, right? Yeah. We have the same enemy actually as God and all of his ugly, nasty, you know, minions. And then uh, we have the same uh, assistance. God has angels to assist him in his mighty work. And we have God's holy angels to assist us in our holy work. I love that when Rabbi Lapin says, oh, bless you, Pastor Natalie, in your holy work. And it just brings me back to, ah, oh, this is a holy work I'm doing. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have a holy work to do. But here we see uh, Eve in the garden, right? She's looking at the tree that God said, don't eat of that because then you will surely die. And so she's looking at it. Once you start looking at it, you go towards it. Mm -hmm. You know, you start considering it. Then she drew a conclusion. She drew the conclusion that it actually looked really good right. for food. Not just like, wow, that's a weird tree. You know, I'm going to stay away from that. God warned me about that one. I don't need to get near it, whatever. No, she kept getting closer and closer to it. She looked at it. She started to investigate it, basically. Once you start investigating another way, you start contemplating everything in you already goes towards it and then of course in the oral torah and everything it says that she stood so close to it that the devil just kind of nudged her and she ended up touching it which he then used that as well you kind of already partook of it you already touched it right yeah. so you might as well just the added part of it was god said don't don't don't, don't eat, eat it, of it of it and adam said to her don't eat of it or touch it so adam yes. added touch it and so the devil used used adam's little addition to yeah. god's word ah see when we start becoming legalistic <laughs> that's what we do and we, we trip people to... up we add add to god's word we are cursed the bible says <laughs> don't do that don't add to god's word mm -hmm. Don't put on people more than what God is actually doing. I love that in the New Testament too, when, when finally us Gentiles and barbarians are added to sell the church, right? right? The apostles all prayed and fasted and inquired of the Lord, how much should we put on them? Because they have no idea about the Torah, about the Ten Commandments. I mean, they're like real barbarians. They're, you know, <laughs> they are 
drinking blood. I'm not going to talk about some countries I know that still really like to eat boiled blood around this season. There's lots of actually countries that I know. Blood. Or eat things that have been offered to idols first, right? When you think about some of the halal meat that's been first offered up to the wrong, the wrong spirit. That's Come on. Cool. Um, and so here you you have you have all of this going on. And there could be a giant list of no-nos <laughs> added to right. the, the this, Gentiles. You have the 613. And then, I mean, you could have just said, okay, now we're going to add so many more. Yeah. Which Even the 613 right. were too much. <laughs> so um, so they, they inquired of the Lord and the Lord just basically told them, hey, make sure that they don't drink blood, right? And because that's, very unhealthy for you, by the way. And then also uh, don't eat anything offered to idols mm. because it all affects your conscience. He's all about our conscience. You see the pattern? Yeah. So here uh, they, they kept it very simple. Remember the poor. And, you know, that's about it. <laughs> so it's very simple about three things. Now here with Eve and Adam, we see that Adam added to God's word. Right. We can do that with children as well. When you do when you're raising children, you're adding so many no's that they just get uh, exasperated. Yeah. And then they just want to give up altogether and they're just going to go crazy. Right. I was a preschool teacher and that's exactly what would happen. The most strictest parents and who would respond with anger had the worst kids. I mean, they were like rebellious little kids. But when we gave them things that they could do, and we didn't talk about the things they couldn't do, we said, this is what you get to do. Who wants to be a leader? You get to grab the little mats. You grab to, get to choose the book. Yes. You know, you get to choose uh, the race we're going to do. Are we doing a stroller race? Are we doing a running race? Do, are we doing a bicycle race today? Those three little horrible bratty boys that I got in my <laughs> group became little champions because we focused on what they could do, not on what they couldn't do. Mm -hmm. So here we see Eve stepping out of her bounds, right? And she starts taking something that she should have never taken for herself. And then because she, you know, her husband loved her so much, he partook in her sin. He wanted to stay with her even if that meant in her sin and so he didn't want her to be alone and he didn't want to be hurt want to be without her and so here we see the whole humanity fell into sin after that children were born but it ha there has never been one child born in this world that was not born in sin meaning that they don't have to re resist sin it's not intense yeah. in the nature so um I want you to know that there are bounds that that are for us. And then there are bounds or boundaries that are not for us. And one has blessing that we cannot deny. And the other has curses that we cannot deny as well. And of course, Jesus makes it real simple. He says, that's the kingdom of light. And that's the kingdom of darkness, right? So everything that is of God is the kingdom of light. Everything that's not of the kingdom of light is the kingdom of darkness. And so we want to make sure that we're always aware of our realms. Of course, the kingdom of light is superior because darkness cannot comprehend the light. We are part of the kingdom of the king of kings, the ruler of the whole world, and the creator of all living things. So we're always on the winning side. Yes. The devil is on the rebellious, uh, you know, he's the rebellious he's the, ruler. He's the loser side. He's the loser side. Worst of all is he knows it, so he's bitter about it, and he just wants to wreak as much havoc as he can before he ends up in that lake of fire and he knows it right we've all read about it we've all reminded him probably <laughs> we get really mad i remind him <laughs> you already smell a little bit like it come on <laughs> so uh but what i want to i want to look at corinthians because or colossians sorry uh, colossians is so powerful because it's it's talking to us about 
our bounds, our boundaries. And that has such an enormous uh, result. You know, when you're in the, in the, when you've trespassed and you go into darkness, there are ramifications for that. But then we don't really think deeply about what happens when we are actually within our anointed and given boundaries. Um, and that is the, the, that's what's called newness of life. Mm -hmm. The life in Christ is our new boundary. Before I was not in the life of Christ, but now that I am, I have life. I have a perpetual renewal. I have a, uh, glory and joy and peace and goodness uh all coming from the inside of me i have peace you know it's amazing what people are doing nowadays to try to have peace it's just ex exhausting work i see them doing you know complicated meditations <laughs> instead of just thinking about god and his goodness right complicated um yeah, complicated meditations where they actually have to like deconstruct. I'm like studying all this new age stuff oh, that they're boy. doing, right? They have to deconstruct themselves and then they have to basically invent themselves and build piece by piece through this complicated meditation. And, and then they have to create a, a force field of attraction around them. And I mean, it's just the most annoying thing. It's the most exhausting thing when you see how the devil is tricking people uh, into doing a complicated thing where all you have to really do is receive the goodness of the Lord. And, wow. you know, bitterness is always a complicated life because you have to do so many things to keep your bitterness. You're, you can't, you have to almost remember like, oh no, I can't be nice. I can't be happy <laughs> either because... I'm angry and bitter, right? Have to remind yourself. Yeah, <laughs> people <laughs> have to sometimes, you know, when you have little children. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes they're mad at you and you're doing something funny and they're laughing and then suddenly they remember they're mad at you. <laughs> it's the silliest thing. It's fallen nature. They're still like kids. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, but we want to we wanna look uh, in the Bible and see that the Lord uh, caused us to be able to come into Christ. Now, the Bible, let's see, huh, I didn't write down the verse, but I think it's Colossians 3. And um, it talks about setting your minds on the things above, where Christ is seated. And so let me just pull it up because, you. oh, you'll do it. Yeah, 3-2. Three, 3-2. Two. Three, two. And so we want we want to read that though. So Colossians 3 verse 2 just grab your bible as well and let's read it yes. together right bible people so let's start in verse 1 it says since you have been raised to new life with Christ set your sights on the realities of heaven or set your mind on the things above so that's really uh important because this is where all change happens you know, when we have a revelation of Jesus, that's where change happens. That's when we have uh, a revelation that releases faith immediately. You know, every time we get a revelation about the Lord, automatically faith comes. That's the power of the yeah, good news of good. the gospel, that when we hear the good news about Jesus, we have a new revelation about Jesus, who Jesus is, what he has done, and how he can affect our lives and change our hearts and our eternity then faith comes you know i realize a lot of people who believe that they are saved have never come past the the place of believing that jesus is real you know and the bible is clear about that uh, one of the apostles said well you do well believing that he's real but so do the demons, right? The demons believe that Jesus is real. They even went about sharing it freely. I mean, they, there was demon-possessed people who said, we know who you are. You are the Christ, the son of God. And Jesus had to tell them to be quiet. And, and so even when Paul uh, was preaching and going around, you know, there was this soothsayer girl who had a demon of soothsaying, of fortune-telling, and she 
uh, she went about constantly saying, these are mighty men of God who have come to preach the good news <laughs> to us about the Savior, right? And and it was they don't they don't have any problem knowing that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the Messiah. They even have the pride and the arrogance of, oh, I know exactly who you are. Even they said, oh, we know Jesus and we know Paul, but who are you, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that arrogance of knowledge that the devil always has. So That's many true. times when I would cast out demons in in when I was a teenager, I hated it. Because the, then young people would stand around and that evil spirit, when the young people that were with me had not taken authority over that spirit, that spirit would try to start saying things about them. Oh, I know you. I know what you did. Da, 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 right. They, they, wanted, they wanted to always reveal their knowledge about a person because it's intimidating when you know that somebody knows a lot about you more than you want them to know. It's intimidating. Right. And so the devil's always intimidating. But but then the Bible goes on to say that it's not knowing that he is real that makes the difference. It is knowing that he is the savior and that he is your savior, that you receive him as your savior, that he's the son of God, born of a woman, miraculous hmm. conception, right? A miraculous life, a miraculous death and a miraculous resurrection. Good. <laughs> Even a miraculous death because nobody killed him. You hmm. know that, right? They always say, oh, the Jews killed him. No, the Bible says that he gave up his yeah. spirit. Before they could stick that spear into him, he had already given up his own life. Yeah. He gave it by free will. And that's what makes it so powerful. Wow. And so when we believe that and we say, I receive you as this, that's the miracle even of marriage. I mean, I can believe that Pastor Tracy is real. Oh, look, that's Tracy. Well, that doesn't make him my husband. You have to make a covenant. You have to make... A, a connection that is different than what you have with anyone else, right? With, with your spouse, same with a child. You could say, oh, look, that is a baby. But until you say that's my baby, right. your life doesn't really change and the child's, child's life doesn't change. Same with a dentist, the teacher, you can go on and on. You can believe that they are real, but it doesn't change one thing. It doesn't change a thing. People are who they are. God is who he is. Jesus is who he is. But it's not until he becomes yours that yeah. change happens. And not that's just good. that part. That's not even enough. We have to become his. So that's a life laid down. The old laid down and the new life taken up. That's again, another level. So two things that really cause people to think that they are Christians and saved and we see that in Matthew chapter 7 and lots of people in the end are going to say but we did all these things in your name and then Jesus will say but I never knew you why because you're still workers of lawlessness you're still breaking all the laws of my father and so you are not a born again child of God you are some a human who believes that God is real and but you've never done that part right and so I remember when we were talking about Moore Cirillo today, Moore Cirillo came. And before Moore Cirillo came to Holland, by this time I'm 11 years old, um, I had given, I thought, my heart to Jesus a hundred times. Every time I stole a snicker bar or licorice or gilders to buy his snicker bars and licorice, you know, or I would lie to my mom about having eaten sugar uh, or sh brushing my teeth. You know, my sister and I, Elizabeth and I, we we would stand in front of the mirror because we always got to, ready together for bed. And then we would say, let's pretend we're doing everything. So we would be like, okay, we're brushing our hair. Because in Europe, that's what you do before you go to bed for some <laughs> reason. Brushing my hair and then I'm brushing my teeth, la, 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 la. And we would pretend the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know why we did it. We were little sinners. That's probably why. And then we would go downstairs and my mom would say, okay, did you do, did you wash your hands? Did you, you know, all the things, did you brush your teeth? Yes. Did you wash your face? We did everything, but we did it in our heads, but we really didn't do it. <laughs> 
And so we would lie about it. It's so crazy. Of course, then you get cavities and then you promise never to do that again. So this is the whole thing. There has to be a, a, a change. So I would give my heart to Jesus every day, but I knew tomorrow I'm going to do it again, right? I'm going to steal licorice again. Mm. I know that was like an addiction. I was a literal, like, it was like crack to me. <laughs> I could not do without sugar. And so I would constantly do that. I was so confused. I did not understand the gospel at all. And I didn't understand why I kept doing it either. And so um, I, I was terrified of the coming of the Lord until more, more Cirillo came and he actually preached the gospel and a part of it, a chunk of it was repentance that you come because you're sorry for your sinful life and that you don't want to be a sinner anymore. You want to become a child of God and you're ready to lay down that old life and give your whole life to Jesus. And it's just the light bulb came on. It wasn't like, oh, you believe that Jesus is real. I, I believe that Jesus was real, but that was still not enough. I also believe that I, I shouldn't sin. And, and I was sorry all the time. I'm like, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I don't want to go to hell, right? I just didn't want to go to hell. It's not that I wanted to give my life to him. I just didn't want to go to hell. And I didn't want the Antichrist to cut my head off. So I was thinking about all those things. <laughs> And it wasn't until I did all those things. I believed that Jesus had died on the cross and he was to become my savior mm -hmm. for my sin, for my fallen nature, that I was actually far from God, though I was born in a Christian family mm -hmm. of ministers, even prophets, right? And that, and that I had to lay down my old life completely and that I was going to become a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. That from now on, I was going to follow Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. That he was going to be the leader of my life. And I was not going to be the leader of my life. You know, it's so fun because in those days, we would sing a lot of songs like, Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will go. <laughs> be it through a, you know a valley or through whatever, I'm going to follow you no matter what. Those kinds of songs we would sing, right? But that is what caused a real new creation reality to happen. Now, with all of that comes an unpacking for the rest of your life of what that means. And that is what Colossians is talking about. Living this new life is a revelation that you have to give yourself to. That every time you get into the word of God, the Bible says, look at it as a mirror because you're going to find out more about yourself. What this new life means. You know, you're talking uh, often in, in this way about adoption. Hmm. That it is like... You know, once you are adopted and in he in the Jewish community, it's not the same as in the Western community. Um, in the in the Jewish community, if you're adopted, it was that you finally took your rightful place. Yeah. You, you were always ours, and this place was always for you, but we are now united. Basically, you were away from us, but now you have come to us. And you have always belonged to us. This It's not like, oh, and she's adopted, right? We're just doing her a favor. We're being nice to her. She doesn't have a family. So we're going to be her pretend family. That is not the Hebrew mind. The Hebrew mind is we were your real family and we found you and you found us. And this has been your place. Now, when we're talking about God, that is the mindset of adoption. When it's talking about adoption, the spirit of adoption, who causes us to cry, Abba, Father, right? Uh, that means that he knew us before he ever created the whole world. And he already foreknew us. That's amazing. And that he always wanted us to become holy children of God. He always had this place reserved for us. Now, in Colossians, it then talks about, in chapter 3, about this new life. And it says, since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, you have to do something. 
So now that you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your kinsman redeemer, that's a whole nother subject. Um, he's your family member who gave his life for you to be returned back to the real family, right? Um, then now you have to set your mind on the things above. So you talk about this where, you know, you had a one kind of lifestyle, but now that you're part of the family, you have to discover the family culture, right. the way we talk, the way we do things. You don't have to hide bread in your pockets anymore, right? Uh, my sister and brother-in-law actually used to foster Linda and Pierre. Um, and that little girl uh, was so starved all the time when she was with her biological mom that when she would visit for a weekend that she would try to hoard food. And the one, she didn't speak except for the word bread in Dutch. She would say brood, brood all the time. She wanted bread. And we found out that her mom would leave her in her crib all day with a bag of bread. That's all that, that she had. And wow. of course, she was still supposed to have formula. She was very malnourished. People would look at us in the park like, what are you doing to your baby? Because she looked like she been eating bread. had been <laughs> starved to death. Yeah. And so um, she had to learn that <clears throat> every time you want food, there's going to be food. So over a matter of months of my brother-in-law just carrying her around because she could barely walk, carrying her around and giving her whatever she asked for, she started to let her guard down yeah. and she started to focus on playing and being happy, singing and dancing instead of looking for food and hoarding it. Um, it was so intense. It was like my dad could barely look at her without crying because it was just so awful. But then she would, by the law, by the Dutch law, she would have to go back to her mom for a visitation weekend. And guess what? It would go back to that again. She would start hoarding those first few days yeah. again because that whole weekend she was starving. So, so here, the Bible is saying that when life happens, we have an enemy and there's things going on. Governments are doing stuff. It's important not to lose track of who we are and where we actually are because circumstances around us will cause us to forget that we're actually far above all that, yeah. that we are part of the ruling family. We're part of the reigning family. We're not part of those that are just subject to whatever people make up their minds to do. No, we have angels like God has angels <laughs> to help and assist. I love that. When you read that about Jesus, when he fasted for 40 days, then the angels came and ministered to him. They served him and blessed him and helped him. So we're not like we were before we were part of this family. Amen. So uh, it says in verse two, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. And I feel like very few children of God do this. I think 99%, at least in the Western world, of children of God think about the things of earth, not the things of our new realm. And this is why we're so bad at the things of the new realm. We're so bad at heavenly things. We're so, you know, we were talking about when um, our, our boys were younger and we would meet in, the, in a Christian sc high school here and some of those Christian kids from the high school would say to my, our children that they were strange for speaking in tongues. You know, that's weird. And when, when their friends would hear that they were going to Citadel Church, they would say, oh, that's that weird church. Cult. Yeah, that we were a cult because we were praying in tongues. Now, these were from Christians, supposedly born again, Pentecostal families, except their church forbade anybody from, from praying in tongues. Um, and so, or having any encounters with the Holy Spirit, the ushers would take you out. And that's one of the largest churches here in the Northwest. It's just yeah. crazy. So, so I want you to understand that the majority of Christians at this point are being pushed to make a decision. You're either going to Know and understand the things of your new realm, which is the heavenly realm, the heavenly kingdom, or you're going to fall away and just 
do things the worldly way, but we want to do things the heavenly way. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth, for you died to this life. And your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Now that's important. You always say, if you can't believe God to even just heal your headache here, how are you going to believe God to beam you all the way up? Such a far fetch. That is like, I mean, all of gravity losing its power on you and you're going up and every cell of your whole body being changed into a new body how are you going to have faith for that there's no way you're going to be so earthly that your your lead boots are going to just hold you to this this realm what are your lead boots it's your mind hmm. your thoughts so thinking about the things of earth doing the things that earthly people do being jealous after each other you know when you're an heir think about uh prince william He's the heir of the whole entire kingdom. Now, he does not have a jealousy problem. He's not jealous of his brother. Hmm. Yet, his brother, who is not going to be king, because Prince William has had children now, so he's demoted, he became jealous. <laughs> we see that so much, right? Yeah. And so understand that when you have the whole kingdom given to you as an inheritance, it is silly to be jealous of anybody. It's silly to try to scratch and claw for a position because you've received the highest position there is in the universe at the right hand of Jesus, <laughs> at the right hand of the Father in Jesus. That's right. And so, so we want to make sure that we are thinking about our place in heaven. We want to think about who Jesus is. We want to think about what we have received. We want to think about how we are empowered. We want to think about how he's supreme and everything else is subject. I've been talking a lot this year to the Lord about how to step into more miraculous power. And it's exciting because the more I am meditating on it, the more I see 100% of people that I'm praying for are getting healed. Even our last reigning meeting, we were just so excited. All of us minister ladies, we prayed for so many people. There was one lady we didn't hear back from, but everybody else, I would check and they were instantly healed. And it's so exciting. And then one of us would prophesy over someone and then another would come and then they would say, oh, I just received that same word from this person. Now, how does that happen? How does that happen? Because we are meditating on Jesus and his ability. So that's what he told me. He said, you will go into greater power and greater manifestation of my power when you think about everything I can do, everything I have done, everything that I'm about, everything that I do. And so I don't meditate upon myself. What can I do? You know, maybe, oh, I have to uh, think about, you know, difficulty less. Oh, I've got to stop meditating on, you know, pain or uh, how long it's been there. No, I'm not focusing on myself. I'm focusing on the authentic one, right? I'm looking at Jesus. I'm having faith in him. I'm believing that he's with us. I'm believing that when he said that, he was telling the truth, that he's in the room right now and that he wants to heal because he always healed everybody. And that there's nothing impossible for him, that he is the resurrection and the life, that he's actually, even when a headache is healed, that is an astonishing miracle that all the chemicals in the brain are suddenly changed, changed and shifted in a moment that never happens. Come on now, except for a miracle and so forth. And there's so many miracles that God is doing when we meditate on him, we set our minds on the things above. That's when we are having the effect of heaven in our lives. Because then he says, and when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. And then it goes on to say, so don't live that natural carnal life anymore, because that's not for you. You know, I went into the, um, the Strong's Concordance to look up uh, some of these words of this this passage in colossians 3 and that word set your minds on it also means to judge it 
Right. So you have to judge what is superior and judge what is true and what is inferior and what is false. Right. You have to judge where am I? Set your mind on, judge about, judge it, think about it, direct your mind to it and seek for it. I love that. Observe and then care for it. That's, those are all the words there. The things above, which means also the top. Come on. <laughs> the things that are uh, overflowing to the brim. The heavenly region upward hmm. isn't that so great hmm. and not on earthly things so that that is the soil um the extent of a region or the globe thinking about natural things so he's saying don't think about natural things think about heavenly things because you've become a new creation you've become a heavenly creation I always like to say we are the newest species on this planet. That's true. We're only a little over 2,000 years old. We never existed before Jesus was the firstborn of this whole new creation. And so um, for you died, right? The old has been decayed and your new life or your life is now hidden concealed up <laughs> it's concealed yes, okay so concealed carry right we do that in washington you it's hidden it's hidden until it is time to be revealed <laughs> right and so to conceal something means that uh, that's also tricky for us because it's not evident to everybody that we're he heavenly when i walk into safeway or ralph's in california it's not an instantly evident to everyone that wow look at that the, glory is the new creation is walking mm -hmm. in right because at all times there's two species happening in ralph's and and in any grocery store right and sometimes us new species we recognize each other give each other a little wink right <laughs> but many times people don't know that you're of a different species and that you have different kind of power at your at your bidding that you have a different kind of anointing that you have a, a different kind of authority that that you are actually the highest authority in that space <laughs> now that's the kind of stuff that you come up with when you start thinking about the things above and guess what happens you drown out that former life the old life where you were subject to everything that happened around you. Many years ago, uh, we, we, you, you did a series on creation versus, uh, uh, what is it? Sorry. Evolution. Evolution. Yeah. You forgot even what it was. I know. So inferior. We don't think about evolution. And so uh, evolution uh, says everything is a big bang but the big thought about an evolutionist is that everything has happened to you that everything still is happening to you but a creationist does not think that way because nothing just happens to you it, it's impossible everything is by design right and so you're you're someone that is called to create with your words yeah. you are a child of the creator and so a creationist does not look around and go oh woe is me you know the little r is happening around me no a new creation a person who's thinking about the things above not the things beneath is not thinking about the power of that that virus but is thinking about the power of God, is thinking about how he raises the dead, how he heals the sick, how he's told us to raise the dead, how he's told us to heal the sick, how the power that is within us is greater than the power of darkness, how, how everything is subject to the name of Jesus. And we've been given that name. And when we use the name of Jesus, all of heaven's armies are, are standing standing in what do you call that they stand 
attention to attention yes um it's powerful when we speak the word of god we're wielding our sword of the spirit that double-edged flaming sword come on when we actually release it from our mouths heaven's armies are heeding those words and are executing the word of god and that's so powerful the holy spirit is brooding over the earth and every time the word of God is released, the Holy Spirit's power comes and manifests creation, manifests also destruction to what needs to be destroyed. This is thinking about the things above. And it's not so much like, oh, several planets higher. It's this other dimension that is of a higher supreme order. That's what is higher. You know, when you're high-minded, then you you think about ruling and reigning when you're low-minded in that sense you think about where can i get a scrap from right and so as as children of god when we give ourselves to this colossians 3 and we're setting we set our minds on the things above it doesn't happen automatically you have to do it on purpose you have to use those brain muscles and go no mind i'm not thinking about that i'm thinking about what's above no uh cnn has nothing to add to me it's not even interesting they're making up stuff all the time oh my goodness um i'm going to read the word of god i'm going to inquire of the lord because that is what's going to make a difference amen so we want to set our minds on those things that are above and then we're going to see the manifestation of the kingdom of god now it's very important when we are believing for healing or we want to be used by God to heal others is that we have a lifestyle that does not give uh, itself to magnifying sickness and disease. We can't do that. You cannot think, oh, you know, we hear that sometimes in the services, I hear these little re reactions when people come up to the front and you say, what, what do you want the Lord to do for you? then the, usually people start telling you the whole history. They would love to show you pictures and everything, right? Of how horrible this disease has been. And especially if people mention cancer, everybody kind of goes, oh, yeah, you hear this reaction. And the, supposedly 95% of people in the room are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but find cancer so scary that they're almost afraid to even say the word in case you jinx yourself into getting it right it's like ooh, yeah in holland oh my goodness people would never even say that word they would say the c you know they have c it's like what they're afraid to say it in case they are going to get it you know one time i was i was evangelizing and i was annoyed because um, I was talking to these people about, you know, if I pray for you, you got, God wants to touch you. And they're like, nothing's going to happen. That doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And I just felt the Holy Spirit rise up in me and giving me an idea and say, well, ask them if you can curse them instead. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I said, can I uh, just hold your hands and curse you instead in Jesus name? And they were like, what? No. They were like appalled. So I said, so you believe in this spiritual thing. You do believe in it, but you made up your mind. You don't believe in the power of God, but you believe in the power of darkness, right? And so this is what many Christians actually live like. We cannot believe more in curses, uh, witchcraft, um, you know, sickness and disease and the power of, of it when all of that is inferior and as soon as the light comes on all of it is chased away come on like little little cockroaches i remember when i lived in in tennessee we had them all the time they would show up when you turn on the light uh, in the kitchen prrr, they would go away i don't know if, if any of you live in the south but they're very common there if you don't wipe the whole kitchen counter down and sweep before you go to bed and put everything in the fridge, you're going to have a problem, right? The little roaches. But as soon as you turn on the light, they scurry back into dark places. 
And that is how we must believe that we are going to set our minds on the miraculous, this realm of God, this almighty realm of light that at one mention with one word, Jesus cast out demons. He didn't do a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to get into that right now because it's really fashionable in Christianity. All the things that need to happen for a person to get delivered. No, Jesus cast them out with one command, with one word, and they are under our feet. He, he calls them serpents and scorpions, right? Mm -hmm. Under your feet, you are to tread on them. And so uh, we want to make sure that we do not give power to darkness through our fear uh, and so step out of our bounds and, and we start playing around in the realm of the devil. We will always lose in the flesh. But when we stay in the spirit, we are always superior. We're always staying in that realm of light. Then Jesus will always be ruling. He will always be reigning. He will always do miracles. He will always set people free. He will always win. You will always go into another realm of health and life and joy and peace when you stop meditating on natural things on woe is me self-pity and i should have done this and i shouldn't have done that none of that is for a child of god amen we don't live in those realms we're living in realms of favor and blessing and help and assistance from on high we are we are living in realms of open doors and glory and power and might and knowledge and wisdom, Woo! understanding all of these amazing things that are in this heavenly realm. We're setting our minds on it. As your mind goes, so everything else goes. Our emotions go that way, then our words go that way. Now we're creating with the devil more darkness, but wow. we don't want to do that. We want to stay in the kingdom of light by setting our minds, set, you and I, we set it. How do I set it? Well, the Bible says, pull on the reins of your mind. It's like a wild horse, right? You got to put a bit in its mouth. That's how you steer a horse. You don't steer a horse by, I, I tried to steer a horse in other ways, and that didn't work very well. That hurts your head. <laughs> you got to have a bit in its mouth. <laughs> And then you have to pull on the reins and you yank the mouth this way. It doesn't feel good to the horse. So the horse goes that direction. It wants to go quickly to the direction that you're pulling on. So Paul is saying, treat your mind and your mouth like you treat a horse. You pull on the reins of your mind and say, ah, ah, we're not doing that. We are thinking about this. We're going in this direction. No, we're not going in that direction. We're going in this direction because your mind will never just automatically think about only glorious things. Our minds, uh, they're kind, they have to be controlled, don't they? One thing controls it or another thing controls it. So we have to renew our mind by steering it in new directions, high directions, heavenly directions, where everything is possible, where faith lives, where God creates, where God actually uh, heals the sick all the time. And so I don't know about you, but I'm ready to uh, keep thinking more and more of my day, thinking more and more time throughout the day about the things that Jesus has accomplished, the things that he has given me, what my inheritance is all about, what my authority in him is all about, what my realm looks like that he has given me so that I can actually see him manifest and not think about the natural. Because if we're thinking constantly about that, we're going to get more of that. Yeah. But wow, it's almost eight. I talked much longer than I expected. <laughs> this felt like 10 minutes to me. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I took up all your time. So, well, we, we, that's, you're going you're to pray that for people in a moment. Yeah. But so, um, but there, there, there are no more healing rooms available, no more healing mm -hmm. rooms available for tonight. So you can, you can get in, you can get ahead of the game by jumping into jumping in the line this yep, week for next, or next week. week. And so you just have to simply text healing to 206-567-1400. 206-567-1400 and our prayer team, mm -hmm. our healing tech 
technicians mm -hmm. will be there available and ready to help you receive your healing, receive your breakthrough. Now we are, we are seeing people from, you know, there's a lot of people that are affected with, with that virus yeah. issues right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know which ones, but there's people that are contacting us saying that their, yep. their families are sick, whatever. I saw yeah. the testimony that went out in today's email. If you're not on our email list for Citadel Church, I would encourage you to do so because it's, there's a testimony every week that tells you how God's moving and that God is actually powerful. And so when we, you get a lot of information of other things, people sick, whatever, yeah. you don't hear the result that someone comes to the healing room. Yeah. Uh, this family had everyone in the family, I guess, was sick. I think something like that. And there was a five-year-old that was really sick. But then by the next day, they could celebrate Thanksgiving. God did an That's incredible wonderful. thing. So let's just believe that God is going to do that for yes. you. So you don't have to be violated by That's sickness right. you have to see it as a violation yes. it's a trespass against you it's like someone walking into your house after you just clean your floors and you they went walking in the mud on purpose and they come walking in your house and they're looking at you chewing gum as they're walking <laughs> through and they're just having that attitude and they're walking all over your nice carpet and all, sitting all over Shredding. and dirty <laughs> and just just dirty just nasty that's what sickness is. Sickness is a violation yeah. and it is not for you, the child of God. And if you're not a believer and you cruise by and you say, well, what are these guys talking about? Purology is, it, what is this all about? Well, and you dropped, you dropped in. This is about you finding Jesus and Jesus able to help you yes. wherever you are. And we can help you find the Lord. Yes. And so if you are needing healing and you want to just jump into the healing room and you want to just put your name on the healing room for next week, that, that would be someone who's really severe. Mm -hmm. Someone who's planning a week, you know, a time that maybe you're, you were diagnosed with, with, with cancer. And we just, we say little C for the other thing or little R, oh, not, yeah. not because we're like, Ooh, we say it because we don't want Facebook or YouTube to get flag us, flag us and drop, drop us because we want to continue to talk to you as long as we can. And we can have an attitude and go, we don't care what you think, but we really know that you're there. And so we yeah. want to make sure that we're going to come talk to you because we know you're there. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're building other platforms, so we won't have to worry about it in the future. But as we are still building uh, our platforms, we want to make sure that we can get to where you are. Yes. So uh, that's the only reason we say that. We protect our communication. Yes. Again, not because we're protecting our hearts and our minds from this <laughs> these things. We know we have authority over them. Yes. And so, you know, Jesus has given us and we share that authority with yeah. him. And so we get to walk in that. And so if you want someone to agree with you in the authority that they walk in, in Christ Jesus, then you can get into our healer room. You can, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if there's some, somebody dealing with MS symptoms, uh, you know, you have nerve nerve symptoms and things going on in your body. Mm -hmm. God wants to heal you. And so, mm -hmm. you know, get on get on our, our, our prayer list and get in that healer room by texting healing to 206-567-1400. And you'll see God move and manifest great and mighty mm -hmm. things in your life. I mean, there is some fun stuff happening. Lady, I, last night I was at a service and Mm -hmm. lady came up and I'm, you know, we're doing like little presbytery things mm -hmm. and it was fun. Presbytery is always fun. And then all of a sudden God just starts to just peel away this woman's trauma. I mean, just peel. I mean, she's like there with a, with a recorder, prophetic word. Next, you know, she's on her knees and she's getting delivered. And so deliverance happens, but it doesn't need to be a show. It can just be literally you and the Lord. It's about freedom. And having <laughs> having just getting set free. And no one even knew she was purging and getting, getting rid of the stuff that's been crawling around in her life and her soul. But God was setting her free. And, and you can have that happen through Zoom. Yeah. I mean, you can get on the Zoom in the Zoom call. And man, it doesn't take years or even days or hours. Many sessions. Many sessions. It's, a, yeah. it's about the enemy must surrender yes. to the authority that's in the name of Jesus. Yes. And it doesn't taste, take a wrestling match. The name there is no wrestling match between heaven and hell. And so you and I should not have one. We should not have one either unless we don't have enough heaven. And so let's get, yes. let's go ahead and get all the heaven we can. That's yes. what this is about. Yes. And um, knowing that your life is hidden yes. in Christ Jesus so we can activate that life. Yes. and manifest their life well that's that was a great message great teaching you want to pray for the people and yes. then before she prays i want to encourage you um don't forget you're in this month of december you're an ap activated evangelist with signs and wonders and the power of the holy yes. spirit is going to move through you wherever you go 
you are active and you're ready to go. You're ready to manifest. So when you walk by someone and you feel this sense of, oh man, I feel like, I feel like there's someone you get, you get, it's like knowledge drops. It's like all of a sudden you have information that you didn't have before. That's what a word of knowledge is like. You have information you didn't have before. It's like uh, you're walking by something and all of a sudden you're going, that person has something going on with their back. That per It's not you weren't thinking about it. You were thinking about getting gifts for people. But all of a sudden knowledge drops on you. You caught their attention. You caught it. They, they caught your attention. Mm -hmm. Knowledge drops into you. Just by, by faith, just, you know, see if you can have a conversation with them. You don't have to go, hey, I see you in the name of Jesus, like you do, in, like we do in service. We can do all that in <laughs> service. You don't have to do that in the service. You don't have to do that. In, right. It's like, okay, so you're, you're in, <laughs> you're in Walmart. You don't have to do all that. No, you just, that's you, weird to the world. Basically, you know, and it's weird to Christians. Yeah, most and, Christians and it, don't like that. Because it's not really necessary. No, it's not it's, it's showy and it's exciting in a service. It looks very exciting. Yeah looks very important. all that's very like so otherworldly and it's great in service i mean it really makes a service dynamic and exciting but <laughs> when you're doing that in in the safeway the walmart the rattles turn people off wherever you are and, and i mean it's just not necessary jesus didn't do it at the well no. can you see jesus jesus at the well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He wasn't doing that at the well. He's no. like, hey, you know, listen, can I have a drink of water? Yeah. Uh, then, uh, well, if you knew who I was, I mean, that yeah. one, that word, I mean, he's just, well, go, you know, I go and get, what get about your, your husband? husband? Yeah. I mean, the, all of that stuff is very practical and pragmatic yeah. to get a person to think because the Bible says the one who is wise wins souls, not the one who is showy. And so be wise, be wise mm -hmm. in your pursuit of the soul, but know that God's going to meet you there, not with just words. But with power, yeah, power is going to be visiting with you. And the more words you have, the more likely you're going to sin. The Bible says so. Don't say too many things. <laughs> yeah, <And> just, <laughs> it's like you know, adding on, missing the mark. And you know, you you know how to have a conversation. It's yeah. like you don't have to have like I'm just a certain just, voice. No, just even like you have to sit there and, as a person looking oh. at you going, "What?" I've been on. The, I've had people contact me, and then all of a sudden they want to give me some kind of word or something. And they sit there and laugh for 15 minutes. I hang up. I'm like, I'm done. I well, can't even. The time I was like, I was like, I was like, I, I, he just, he's just laughing. He says there's a word, but I've got to go do something. I mean, and I'm not laughing. So whatever, if you're laughing, that should be getting on me. You're just laughing. Here, enjoy yourself. Send yeah. it in the email. Don't waste right? people's because time. Don't waste people's time because God wants to move. And, you know, so these are just, I just want to encourage you. You know, you're going to be available for God. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just don't just do it just do it yes and you know you don't and if you don't feel like you have to you don't feel like you then don't you'll be impressed by god to do it and if you mm -hmm. don't feel impressed by god to do it if you don't feel like there's enough impression to overcome your fear and enough challenge then you know just pray it call it intercession mm -hmm. and intercede for that person and then you know work yourself up into another level of faith that lord next time i'm going to really step out and then, you know, let these, let these things stir inside of you. Don't fight them, but be sensitive in this season. If you have the mind of Christ, you have the mind for people. Yes. God loves people. Yes. And he wants you to love people too, to as well. Free. And most Christians love themselves. They're lovers of themselves, keeping up for themselves, teachers that benefit themselves. Okay. And so when we realize that we're going to become more the mind of Christ, the more we're going to actually adjust our sights to other people. And we're going to actually pay attention to them. All right. So that's my little evangelistic encouragement with the power of evangelism. It's time to go. All right. But we're going to, you're going to pray for release something on people. I also want to, when is your, when is, it's not, this is not a Citadel event, but my wife has a ministry. Lionheart Ministries Lionheart is our ministry. Is our ministry, but she is like relying on She's roaring. As you can tell, there's just this roar coming out of her. She, she took an hour of our teaching tonight and i know i don't i don't have a problem i'm no, i'm fully like let's go i talk all the time anyway so and but you know so when is your next meeting reigning women is going to be uh the 16th of december so all that's right. next friday the 16th jingle bells we're going to be at the residence in yes in in bellevue so if you want to get your bell jingled Yep, you can <laughs> come over there to the <laughs> a bell jingle. <laughs> like that's where you go. Well, la, la, la. 
you can do all that in service and maybe not well, in service i'm just i'm we I had a, quite a few like seemingly unchurched people as well show up so we don't want to do any christian fashion we just want to stick with bible because that's you know the more potent it is the less you add the more yeah, potent it gets so we don't want to add little noises but, little words little fillers yeah that's like uh when you have uh apple juice and you fill it up with a bunch of water you know it's just not quite the same you want to have the whole thing so if the holy spirit but if i've been touched by the holy spirit where i've had to do like a couple things and that's okay but if don't try to do it don't try to <laughs> don't try i mean i've been like really hit with god before and so yeah. i've had those times but we aren't we aren't the kind of person that well we aren't the kind of cult community goes. that never happens when you're evangelizing or ministering to someone no, somewhere no, it no. that it, has happened it's in like to, it's subject yeah. to the prophet right so you get to operate in what's your what's subject. yeah and anything you, that's a distraction or strange but it, remember it is subject that's why a person can go yeah. eh, 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 and all of a sudden go huh because it's it is subject to you yes. we told someone Oh, your keys fell out of your pocket and they stopped shaking and making those noises. And they said, Oh, thank you. Put it back in their pocket. And then they did it, went that, on. It's a full yield. It's a submission. All right. Anyway, bless you guys. I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> we bless you. The They're supposed to be in their healing rooms already. <laughs> we bless you. We release the grace of God. To yeah. You. We do want to say, you know, some of you um, have, I, I was hearing that long, see, <laughs> and, um also this family with children you've all been sick so our stance is that whatever has happened has happened but you don't have to let it run its course amen so the kingdom of god interrupts things all the time so once the kingdom of god shows up into the situation you're calling for the elders right now to pray for you we are elders in the body of christ then it has to go healing starts happening so amen. that's the good stuff and you're going to close them out you're the elder well yeah i gave you the release to release okay. because you taught the word all right so jesus we magnify you we thank you that you paid the full price you bought all of our victory all of our healing all of our salvation by your perfect sacrifice and only based on that our whole uh, leaning of our trust and faith is on the fact that you did that and so now I declare over your people that have come here and those even watching later on, I declare that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. I Thank declare you. that your sins are forgiven you. Thank you. I me. declare that every accusation of the devil is now squashed. Yes, and I release the blessing of God upon you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I yes. release the quickening of life and resurrection power into every fiber of your being. Thank you. Your soul, your spirit, your mind, your body, your children, your household. We command life from on high in Jesus' name. We command death to stop. We command sickness to stop. We bind spirits of infirmity and we cast you out. And we release the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus right now from the crown of your head flowing all the way to the soles of your feet, that whoosh of the Holy Spirit, just washing you, Thank cleansing you. you, killing off the virus in Thank Jesus' you. name. I command fevers stop in Jesus' name. Thank Headaches you. go right now in the name of Jesus. We command perfect health from the youngest to the oldest children and also all the adults under the sound of our voice be made whole in Jesus almighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, peeps. Bless you. Just keep thanking the Lord. Grandpa also healing. Yes. Yes. We speak life, Jamie, to your grandfather's Jesus, lungs yeah. and we commend all cancer cells to die Thank right you. now in Jesus name and his you. immune system to be strong and healthy all growths we command it to go we command all of the pockets in his lungs to completely open up and be clear in jesus name amen and we call it a finished work of yes Christ. all right be blessed we'll see you this weekend or we'll see you next week whichever one comes first yes <laughs> <laughs>